What is going on guys, it's Panjan here, and today I'm going to be bringing you guys the ultimate FPS increase guide for the newly released Battle Royale game, Radical Heights. Radical Heights has recently entered into the Steam Early Access program, and in so is very early into its development cycle. And with the game being so early in development still, and lacking some of those nitpicky optimization updates, this can leave a lot of you, including myself, on both of my machines, lacking some of the performance in which the other Battle Royale titles out there are providing. As we get deeper into the development cycle of this game, I'm sure we'll be seeing a ton of optimization patches coming out from the developers, ensuring that this game is running absolutely perfectly on pretty much every single system out there. But for the meantime, I've gone in and applied some optimizations, had a look around, done my research and applied some optimizations of my own to compile this ultimate FPS increase guide for you guys, regardless of what sort of system you're running on, whether that be low end, medium end, high end or extremely high end PCs, there will be a config and settings with inside of here to ensure that you're getting the most out of your machine so you can enjoy the game to its full potential and really enjoy its gameplay. Personally, I think the game is highly underrated and I'm actually having a ton of fun playing it. So if you haven't checked this game out already, or you're not entirely sure or you've come off of it because you couldn't run it particularly well, make sure to try out this guide, re-download the game, try it out again, and let me know in the comments down below of what you think of the game and also how well the optimizations within inside of this video have helped you. And as always guys, if you guys do find this guide helpful and you are happy with the results of it, please do leave a like on the video as it always helps me out a ton. Leave your comments and results down below alongside any questions or queries you might have. All of them can go down in that comment section down below as I pretty much read every single one out there. And one last thing to mention for any of you guys who frequently follow most of my content, I have also included the link to my Patreon down in the description down below. The option to further support the channel on Patreon is mainly there for you guys who are frequent followers of my content and wish to further support me in any way possible. The Patreon is there and any proceeds from that will also help me stabilize my income and allow me to put in more time into creating content for you guys doing research and dedicating more time to getting out more content on a more frequent and consistent basis. Okay, so starting off with the guide, what you guys are going to have to go ahead and do is navigate into the description down below and download the Radical Heights FPS Increase Pack, which will be found in the description down below. Click on either of the links. If the first link doesn't work, try the second link or vice versa. Make sure you download it and you'll be given a file that looks just like this. This might be in your downloads file. I recommend putting this on your desktop. This file here is just an overall pack I've compiled which contains game config files so you can easily install them, all the launch options and other programs you will need to follow along with this guide. You can use them all if you wish to do so or you can just decide on which ones you wish to follow. But it's just a neat, tidy and convenient pack for everyone so you can follow along with this video easily. Once you guys have got that downloaded and put it onto your desktop, you'll be given a file that looks just like this. Now to open up this file, because it is a folder which has been compressed for convenience, you're either going to need a program called 7-Zip or WinRAR. Go down into the description down below and follow one of the links for either of those programs if you wish to install one of them or go to Google and just simply Google WinRAR or 7-Zip. Go ahead and download it and install it. And once you've got one of those programs, you'll then be able to go to the file, right click on the file and click extract here. Once you've then done that, you'll then notice that a folder will appear on your desktop with a very similar name. Simply go into the folder and when the start of the folder, you'll be greeted with game configs, optimizations, credits and launch options. Inside of the game configs, you will find configs inside of here with the best overall config and which I recommend for everyone to use and the high-end config for any of you guys running on more high-end systems who want some of the extra graphics options enabled and you want your game to be looking extremely nice with some slight added optimizations, you can go for that as well. Inside of the optimizations folder, you will have these three files here in which you can go ahead and follow along later on in the video to ensure that you're getting the most out of your PC. And inside of the credits.txt inside of there, you will find the original download links for any of the programs provided in here. You can go ahead and actually pay credit over to the original authors, check out their websites and download the latest version of the programs if you wish to do so inside of there. So you can pay credits over towards the people who made the programs with inside of the optimizations folder. And last but not least, you'll be given the launch options.txt, which inside of here, which gives you the launch options we're going to be using inside of Steam. Now, if you're not entirely sure what I'm going on about here, don't worry, we're going to be going through this step by step and I'm going to be showing you everything you need to do. So going ahead and getting started, we're actually going to be installing our custom launch options. So to do this, go into the launch options.txt by double clicking. And when the side of here, you'll notice that your launch options are up here. Now, what you guys simply need to go ahead and do is actually configure these to match your system specs. You can use this text guide down here to find out how to do that if you wish to do so, or you can follow the on-screen guide now. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be customizing this option here, which is preferred process account. We're going to be changing this number from six to match your system. And to find out what you need to set this number to, it's very simple. Simply go down to the bottom of your PC, right click, then go into task manager. Then on the side of here, go to the performance tab found at the top, click on CPU, and down here in the bottom right hand side, you should see a tab called logical processors. As you can see, my logical processors are six. Now, whichever this number is for you, it might be six, four, two, might be more or might be less. Whatever that number is by logical processors, that is the number we're going to be setting to preferred processor. So for me, that is six. But if that number is different for you guys, make sure you put that number in. Once that's in set assembly, then go ahead to the end of the launch options. Copy all the way from the right hand side to the left, just like so. Once it's all highlighted, simply go ahead, right click, hit copy minimize or close out of the launch options.txt 
go ahead down to Steam, right click on Radical Heights, go to Properties, go to Set Launch Options, and on the side of this text box here, simply right click, hit Paste, and it should look just like that. Once you guys have done that, simply go ahead and press OK. And at this stage, I also like to go ahead and actually turn off the Enable Steam Overlay whilst in game and use Desktop Game Theater while VR is active. Turning off those two options will also increase your FPS, especially on the more lower end systems out there, as a the Steam Overlay inside of most games actually does deteriorate performance only minorly, but if you want every FPS and the best performance possible, I do recommend actually switching those two off just by unchecking them. Then once you guys are done inside of there, you can go ahead and press close, and you can then minimize out of Steam. Proceeding on from there, we're actually going to be going ahead and applying some optimizations to the game applications themselves. This is very easy to do. Simply go ahead and navigate down to Steam again, go to Radical Heights, right click, and go to Properties. Inside of here, we're going to be going to the Local Files tab found at the top, go to Browse Local Files, simply go ahead to the Shooter Game folder found here by double clicking, then going into Binaries, then going into Win64, then on the side of here you'll find three applications, Radical Heights, R&R Win64 Shipping, and R&R Win64 Test. We're going to be starting off with the top one, which is Radical Heights, by right clicking, going down to Properties. Inside of here we're then going to be going to the Compatibility tab. Then on the side of here we're then going to be going right down to the bottom, to where we see Override High DPI Scaling Behavior Performed By, and then checking that. And for any of you guys running on higher end systems, or you believe your system to be a higher end system, you can actually go ahead and actually check Disable Full Screen Optimizations as well. But for the majority of you guys and the guys running on lower end machines and medium end machines or older machines, go ahead and make sure that's unchecked as well. Then once you guys have got the override high DPI scaling behavior performed by set, go ahead and press apply and OK. Then you simply just have to go ahead and repeat that step for the other two applications with inside of here. So go to r and Win64 Shipping, right click, Properties, Compatibility, make sure you set override high DPI scaling behavior performed by. If you're on a higher machine, check that as well. Press apply, press OK. Once you guys have then done inside of there, you can then go ahead and exit out. Now, last but not least, for the game specific optimizations, we're actually going to be going ahead and installing our custom game config files to ensure we're getting the best FPS possible and adapting some of the in game options to ensure that we are getting on the best and most optimized settings possible for the best overall experience and frame rate. So, to do this, we actually have to navigate to where your game config files are installed to. So, to do this, simply go to the bottom left hand side, type in percent app data percent, and then press enter. Once you guys have done that, go to the app data folder found here at the top in this directory, press it once, go down to local, and inside of here, scroll all the way down and you'll find a folder called Radical Heights. Go ahead and double click on that folder, then go into the saved folder, and then go into config, Windows client, then on the inside of here you should be seeing a bunch of configuration files. What you guys need to simply go ahead and do is just drag this off to one side of your PC, then go into the FPS pack provided again by double clicking going into the game configs folder, and then on the side of here you'll be met with these two folders. If you guys are running on a brand new high-end or ultra high-end machine, I recommend clicking on the high-end config. But for everyone else, whether that be a low-end system, medium-end system, or even high-end systems, like myself, I'm going to be going with this best config up here, and I'm running on a pretty high-end machine. So the option there for the high-end config is there for you guys if you wish to use it, but I recommend 99.9% .9 of you guys watching this video, you'll get the best results with the best config. So somebody go ahead, double-click on the folder in which you're going to be using, then on the side of this folder you'll then be met with these three configuration files, the engine, the game user settings and scalability. Then simply to install these, we're going to be going ahead, dragging them out of the best config folder or whichever config folder you're using and dropping them into our game config files. Once you guys have dragged them in, it will then ask you to replace the files in this destination. Go ahead and do that. And then once the files are then replaced, we have now installed our custom game config files and we're done with the game specific optimizations. You can then simply go ahead and exit out both the folders. And with the rest of this video, I'm going to be showing you guys some operating system specific optimizations to ensure that your operating system is running to the best of its ability to ensure that you guys are getting the best performance, not just with Inside of Radical Heights, but pretty much any single game you're playing out there, just to ensure that you're getting the most out of your system as possible. Okay, so starting off with the operating system specific optimizations. First off, what we're going to be doing is ensuring that our PC is running the best power plan possible to ensure that the hardware within inside of our systems is being utilized properly. To do this, simply go ahead to the bottom left hand side and we're going to be typing in power. Once you guys have typed that in, simply go ahead and look for any of the options with the battery and the cord around it. It doesn't matter which one it is, it doesn't matter if you go to choose a power plan or edit power plan, no matter what it says, just click on any of them. And then once you guys are inside of here, go to the power options tab found here at the top. Then what I want you guys to go ahead and do is navigate down to show additional plans and then look for the plan that's just called high performance. Wherever that is, make sure you go ahead and actually select it, just like I have there. Once it's then selected, go to change plan settings. Inside of here, you can set these options to whichever you wish to do so, they are personal preference, and do not change the outcome of this video. 
But the option we're interested in looking at is change advanced power settings found here. Click on it once, go to hard disk, turn off hard disk after, go to the setting with inside of here by double clicking. This will usually be set to 20 minutes. We're actually gonna be going ahead and actually setting this to zero and pressing apply. Then what we're gonna be doing is scrolling down all the way to the bottom and going to processor power management, clicking the plus sign next to that, going to minimum processor state and maximum processor state and ensuring that they are both set to 100%. If they are not set to 100%, simply go ahead, double click on the blue number, set it to 100, press apply, and then press OK. Save your changes, you can then exit out of the power options. Following on from that step, we're now going to be going ahead to the bottom left hand side, then typing in this PC, right clicking on this PC and going to properties. Then on the side of here, we're then going to be navigating to the left hand side and clicking on advanced system settings. Once you guys are inside of there, go to the advanced tab found here at the top, go to performance and click on settings. Once the settings open, you'll be greeted with this screen here, and we're gonna be setting the visual effects tab to custom. Once you guys have done that, simply go ahead and start unchecking all of the options with inside of here, simply by going ahead and clicking on the tick and making sure it is unchecked. Now, the only options we're going to be remaining inside of here, which we want checked, are smooth edges of screen fonts and show thumbnails instead of icons. Now, for me, I actually like to have smooth edges of screen fonts turned off. It doesn't affect performance or anything. It's just a personal preference thing for me. You guys can turn it off as well if you wish to do so, but I recommend the majority of you keep this on. Then once you guys are done inside of there, simply go ahead and press apply. Then we're going to be navigating over to the advanced tab found here at the top, making sure processor scheduling is set to best performance of programs. Press apply, press OK, and then you guys can go ahead and press OK again. Proceeding on from that step, we're then going to be applying some Windows audio fixes to ensure that our audio sample rate is set to the native rate with inside of Windows to ensure we're not getting any stuttering problems from that or causing any excess overhead on the CPU. This might sound a little bit confusing, but what we're basically doing is removing any post-processing effects from your Windows audio, basically meaning it's running completely natively and no other load is being added onto your CPU from audio or causing any stuttering problems with inside of games. So to do this, simply go ahead and navigate down to the bottom right, right click on your speaker icon and go to playback devices. Then on the side of here, go to the playback tab on the top left hand side, then scroll all the way down until you find your speaker icon or whichever you're using to actually play your games or listen to this video. You'll normally have the green tick next to it and if you're watching this video right now, you should be seeing the audio levels jumping around here on the right hand side. Once you guys have found it, simply go ahead and right click on it go to properties. And before we change anything with inside of here, I just need to let you guys know that once we apply these fixes, sometimes your audio can actually cut out. Now, if it does cut out, don't panic. It's very easy to fix. All you guys simply need to go ahead and do is exit out of any programs that are currently running, boot them back up, whether that be Google Chrome or Internet Explorer, Steam, Spotify. If the audio doesn't come through on them, close the programs, open them up again, and they will work just fine. So to apply these changes, what we're gonna be doing is going ahead to the enhancements tab, first of all, and going to disable all sound effects and making sure that is checked. Once that's then done, go ahead and press apply. And once you guys are done inside of there, go to the advanced tab. And this time we're going to be going to the default format, going to the drop down menu, scrolling all the way to the top and finding 16 bit, 44,100 Hertz CD quality. It should look just like that. Make sure that's applied. Go ahead and press apply. Go ahead and press okay and okay again. And then that optimization has then been applied. And for one of the last and most important optimizations within inside of this guide, we're then going to be going back into the FPS pack provided again, going into the optimizations folder this time. We're going to be going to the CPU core parking setup version 2110 and double clicking. This is a setup wizard for the program called CPU Core Parking, and you can find the original download links and the author's website of this program in the credits.txt and pay any credits over towards them. And just check out the other programs in which they have coded because they do a lot of fantastic work over there. So if you wish to pay any credits over to them, that is where you can find their original links. Once the wizard has then opened, simply go ahead and press next, then accept the terms to the license agreement and then press next. Make sure it installs to the default location by pressing next and then press install. Once you guys are done inside of there, simply go ahead and make sure that the check launch CPU core parking 3 EXE has then been checked and then press finish. After a few moments, the program should then open and it should look very similar to this, but some of your information in here will look slightly different. So to set this up properly to ensure it's giving you guys the best results, what we're going to be doing is starting off by going to the power data plan found here at the top left hand side, going to the drop down menu and selecting high performance as that is now the power plan our system is running on. Inside of here, we're then going to be going ahead to the sliders and which you can find here, and we're going to be setting them to 100%. So starting off with the core parking index one found here, whichever this is set to for you guys, simply go ahead and drag the notch, drag it all the way to the right to 100%. We're also going to be doing that for our turbo boost index by dragging it all the way up to 100%. Go to the frequency scaling index, dragging that all the way up to 100% again. Then once you guys are done inside of there, simply go ahead and press apply. It'll then notify that the changes have successfully been applied and press OK. 
And for any of you guys who are interested, you can also find out some information about the processor and which is inside of your system. If you're not sure what it is, it's just a little bit of information there for you guys. So as you can see, that's my processor there. And it shows you how many cores you have inside of that and the speeds in which it is running at. Once you guys are then done inside of there, you can simply go ahead and hit close. And lastly, for one of the most important yet easiest optimizations with inside of this guide I can recommend is actually going ahead and making sure that your GPU or graphics card driver is actually completely up to date. I've included links for both AMD Radeon and Nvidia GeForce users in the description down below. And you can go to these websites which are found here and download the latest version of your GPU driver. So for any of you guys who are wondering how to do this and make sure that you're on the latest GPU driver, simply click on the corresponding link for whichever GPU your system has. Go to the NVIDIA GeForce link. Once you guys are inside of there, go to the Automatic Driver Updates tab found here at the top. Go to the GeForce Experience and hit Download. Open up the program, follow the wizard and inside of there, it will go ahead and detect and install your latest GPU driver and keep everything up to date for you guys. For any of you guys who have gone ahead and followed the AMD Radeon link, it's a very similar process in how to do this. Go to the Automatically Detect and Install Your Driver tab found here. Go to the Download Now button, go ahead, download the program, open up the program, it will go ahead and install and detect everything for you and ensure that you are keeping up to date with the latest GPU driver. And it really is just as simple as that. Once they're installed, it'll ask you to restart your system. Restart your system, you'll be good to go, and I almost guarantee that you'll be seeing fantastic results from doing this step alone if you don't already do this. And following on from there, once you guys have installed your latest GPU drivers, for you NVIDIA guys, you can actually go into the Optimizations folder, go to the NVIDIA settings, and you can follow these screenshots with inside of here to get the best FPS possible and optimize your graphics card by using the NVIDIA Control Panel, which you can get to by right-clicking on your desktop, going to NVIDIA Control Panel, Follow these screenshots with inside of here to make sure that your GPU is running to the best of its ability. And one last very important recommendation for you guys, and it will also be a card on the screen now, is actually to go ahead and follow my GPU overclocking guide. It is one of the most simplest and effective ones on YouTube. It's been getting fantastic reviews and fantastic ratings and some really, really good results. People out there who have no idea how to overclock and are intimidated by it or scared by it, I highly urge you to go and actually check out that video as there are FPS improvements from around about up from 35% all the way up to around about 75%, depending on what your system is like, just sitting at your fingertips, ready for you to utilize. Now, once you guys have reached this stage in the video, it's actually time to go ahead and actually restart our systems by going to the bottom left-hand side, right-clicking on the power button and going to restart. We're gonna be doing that to ensure that all of the operating system optimizations we have applied are completely applied properly, and we're on a fresh boot of Windows, ready to go ahead and boot our game. So simply go ahead, reboot your systems, come back to the video, and we can then continue on. Welcome back to the video, guys. You guys should have now restarted your systems, open up Steam, and we should be good to go ahead and actually boot into our game. But before we do that, we're going to be going ahead and ensuring that we go to the last step of this video. And to do that, simply go into the FPS pack provided, go to the optimizations folder, one last time, get the timeresolution.exe, drag it, and drop it onto your desktop. So to use this program, it's very simple. Before you go ahead and boot into any game, you just simply go ahead, go to the program, open it by double clicking, click the maximum button. Once you guys have clicked that button, go ahead and minimize it. Then what you guys wanna go ahead and do is boot up your game, play it for however long you wish to do so. Once you're done playing, go back to the program, hit default, and then exit out. And it really is just that simple. And assuming that we're done with this guide now and everything has been applied and we are good to go ahead and boot our game, we're gonna be booting into time resolution, clicking maximum, minimizing the program, going to Steam, and there's just one last thing to do, and that is actually to go ahead to the play button and press play. And there you guys have it. There is my ultimate FPS increase guide for Radical Heights, the newly released early access battle royale game with inside of Steam. Again, guys, if you guys can let me know what you think of the game in the comment section down below. I personally really like it, but we'll require some more updates and some more content and just some more overall polishing, which should be coming in the next few months to really start taking off. But I do think it is one of the more fun battle royale games out there, and I'm personally enjoying it. If you guys can also let me know of your results down in the comment section below, that would be fantastic. Alongside any questions, queries, or suggestions, they are always more than welcomed, and I pretty much read every single one of them out there, as I mentioned before. And if you guys do like this content and you wish to follow along with content like this on other games, other platforms, or follow along with some suggestions, I highly do recommend subscribing to the channel and pressing that bell notification to be notified whenever I release updated FPS guides, new FPS guides, or guides for other things inside of your PCs, consoles, whatever it may be. If there's not a guide for it, I'm also welcoming suggestions all the time. So with doing that, you'll be notified as and when they come out. Again, for any of my frequent followers, that Patreon link is down in the description down below if you wish to further support the channel. It's not entirely necessary, but it does just help me just that little bit extra in putting more and more time into this. And last but not least, thank you very much to everyone watching this video. I've been Panjano, and I'm out.